Google Chrome DevTools AI Assistant can help you to test, debug, and develop software as you don't have to go anywhere else. You can stick to Google Chrome DevTools and ask AI Assistant within the same location as you don't have to copy-paste anything and go to ChatGPT. And on this video, I will share with you how to create test cases, test, test plan, and how to create test automation within a seconds within the same Google Chrome DevTools AI Assistant, which you can find in every single tab of the Google Chrome DevTools. But I will share it only with those kind of people who will hit this big fat thumb up button below, subscribe to our channel, and also Share this video with your friends who probably have no idea that Google Chrome DevTools now has AI Assistant in it. My name is Sergey Kromchenko and I'm a software QA engineer, lead manager and a senior engineering manager of SDAT in the past. But these days, I'm helping people like you to become a QA engineer from scratch or to improve your existing skills as I'm a founder of the Codemify Bootcamp, links to which you can find right here. Now, let's continue. First of all, let me show you how to bring up an AI assistant in a Google Chrome. Click, uh, do the right click anywhere on the page and then click inspect. After that, you will see this page. So go to settings, go to AI innovations, and then scroll down and enable this AI assistant. Excellent. Then let's close it. Navigate back here, scroll all the way up in the elements, in the elements tab and do the right click over the body element and ask AI. Now we're going to expand just a little bit so we could see the page better. And also let's click on sign in, scroll up and actually do it here. Let's do the right click and ask AI again. So we could update the elements we're working with. You see, so pretty much we're going to be asking AI for help with this page. So we gotta make sure it has context or it has access to the entire body of this page. So let's type in, let's actually paste this question. What are the edge cases, unusual behaviors I should test on this login page? As we already know what test cases we need to write for a login page, but what are the, what are the unusual behaviors that we should test? Let's, let's hit enter and see. Based on the properties of the body element and common login page implement implementations, here are some edge cases and unusual behaviors you should consider testing. Viewport size variations, absolutely. Accessibility features, absolutely. Browser and device compatibility, absolutely. Network conditions, JavaScript disabled, blah, blah, blah. There are quite a few other handling security features. View transactions, see, input field validations. These are the most common ones that people usually get to know, but you've never even thought about CSS interactions, JavaScript disabled, network conditions, etc. These are not as important as what users, users will usually do, such as long inputs, copy pasting fields, auto fill and password managers, etc. But we've got the list. Amazing. By the way, if you are interested to become a software QA engineer from scratch to improve your existing skills or learn how to build AI from scratch or AI workflow, I'm running quite a lot of courses and some of them are for one, one week where you can learn basics of it, you can learn how to answer basic interview questions and even get an internship in a US-based startup for a whole week. The links for those courses are right below this video. Now the next one for these login page test cases test cases what would playwright api tests look like and let's hit enter Alrighty. okay let's outline some playwright test examples for the login page scenarios we discussed we're gonna scroll down and see oh wow okay so we are actually getting an entire test case written in Playwright. We don't even have to do that. And it's all here within the same location. We didn't even have to step out to any of the AI clients such as ChatGPT or Cloud or whatever. And you see very many of those. Should display correctly and large desktop, etc. It's scenario two, etc., etc., etc. We can go through every, every single one of them, but I will let you guys play with it. 
Okay, great, but this is pretty much using inline selectors. What if we would take it to the next level and say, hey, can you use page object model? And you guys can use whatever design pattern you want to use in your framework. But since page object is still very popular, let's see if we can convert it to. Can you use page object model for these tests? And absolutely, using page object model is a great way to make your playwright tests more readable, maintainable, and scalable. Let's refactor. Boom, login page, TypeScript or JavaScript. Excellent, we've got all of our getters, all of our locators, all of the helper methods written down. And by the way, I am seeing some one-liners. I wonder, have you guys ever written in one-liner helper methods? If you did, why so? I'm just not a fan of writing one-liners. You can simply use inline selectors instead, but you let me know. Excellent, we work with UI, we've got a test cases, list of task cases, we got them automated, we've got to utilize even page object model. Now let's test out actual APIs with an AI assistant. So we're going to, I'm going to switch to the network, I'm going to clean up all of the requests and I'm going to log in. It's going to be support at codemify.com and a password is going to be right here and we're going to click sign in. Alrighty, we are logged in. That's awesome, but let's let's take a look at a specific page. Chrome Chenko. We're gonna navigate to this page and I'm going to click on this WDAO video reporter I've created in the past. And we're gonna test one of these API requests. Excellent. It's all sorted out by fetch XHR, which means APIs only. And let's take this API request. Hold on, that one is modified. I don't think we need that one. Are all of them modified? Hold on, 304. No, that doesn't matter. We can still work with that one, even though it was redirect. Cool. This is an API request we're going to be working with. I'm going to do the right click and ask AI. And you can guys pick any request. I just like working with the GitHub, so I'm going to use it. And let's see, what can we ask? And by the way, some of our subscribers did ask me to help them to improve their English as majority of us were not born in the US or in English speaking countries. So especially for you guys, I did open up a new YouTube channel called Sergi Speaks. And you can find a link for it right below this video. Let's continue. Let's ask what are the test cases I could use to test this API request. And we are on this master specific one. Let's take a look. This get request is intended to retrieve information about the latest commit on the master branch on a WDAO video reporter GitHub repository. The request uses application blah, 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 etc. So happy path, tune it, okay. Test this, not modified, not modified. Verified that if the resource has not been modified, the server correctly returns 304, invalid repository, branch, etc. So we've got multiple requests, positive and negative. We can go through all of them, but I will leave it for you guys. We've got a, quite a big list. Excellent. Let's ask for a little more details. Based on this API response, actually based on these test cases you have written. What would play, actually, what would API tests in JS look like? So we want to see some JavaScript API tests for, for all of the requests that were mentioned above. It looks like, it looks like a, uh, this AI is showing us an example with JEST and X, actually with Axios. And it seems like the JEST was already installed, but Axios is our API client. And yeah. Here we go. We're testing get requests. We're verifying we're getting 200. We're verifying the data is not undefined. We're catching adders and we're showing them if needed. One, two tests, three tests, four. Pretty much we got all of them, but that's cool. I mean, you like access probably, but what if people prefer to use Playwright since it's becoming trendy? Can you show me same examples of API? tests with Playwright. Absolutely, we can see the Playwright, and which is an excellent choice for API testing, especially if you're using it for end-to-end -end tests. There we go, let's do that, let's see. 
api.spec.js, base url, branch, invalid branch. Oh, cool. It did create some, it also did create the data for the invalid input tests or it, for the negative tests for API. Let's take a look. So, test number one Happy Path 200 should return OK and latest commit into for a modified resource. And we are, we are sending a request right here to the base URL, valid branch, and then we're verifying that it's 200 or greater than that or lesser than 400, which means it's going to be between 200 and 400. As you guys are professional key engineers, you probably know that if statement is not the best option to go with, in your test cases, you should never use if statement because we cannot have if function, ify functionality. All of the functionality should work in a way we expect it to per requirements. So we should definitely not use if statement. But since this is an example, you can simply copy paste and edit all of your code into VS Code or whatever code editor you prefer to use. But it seems like this guy did a pretty good job on showing us an example on how to create API tests with a playwright with access. And we can try the same thing with a Selenium. Great. Can you show me Selenium tests version of it? With Python, let's say. Excellent. It will do the same thing for us. It shows us how to install Selenium and, requ Selenium and request frameworks in the library. And then you scroll down, you see, I scroll down, you see all of the imports. You see same setup as in JavaScript, but with Python. All of the comments and things, your actual test right here just like with the JavaScript, but with Python and with Selenium. So pretty much it can show you any, any of the frameworks and languages you ask it to. So you don't have to jump into different windows. You can do all of it right here. Great. So this was an example on how to use Google Chrome DevTools AI in order to get quite a bit of help within the same window for QA engineers or QA automation engineers. If you guys would like to learn more, you let me know what exact topic would you like me to dig into.